First built as a Second World War military camp, Walker Lines has a rich and diverse history. Beginning in early to mid-1939, the camp was constructed in two phases. The first beginning just before the outbreak of the Second World War. This initial building phase included the construction of a nine wooden hut encampment, initially intended to house the militia and described in a July 1939 article in the Cornish Guardian as being built with every modern convenience. The Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry, otherwise known as the DCLI, had their own quarters at Victoria Barracks. In October 1939, one month after the outbreak of the Second World War, due to the influx of new training recruits, this nine-hutted camp was dramatically extended. By March 1940, Walker Lines encompassed 52 acres of land and 111 buildings in total. It's a common misconception that Walker Lines camp was purposely built to house the Americans in their preparations for D-Day. But in actual fact, it wasn't until late 1942 when the whole site, including Walker Lines and Victoria Barracks, was handed over to the Americans. Up until this point, alongside the DCLI, the camp housed a large number of British troops from a number of regiments who had been sent to Bodmin for their basic training. It wasn't until May 1943 that most of the Americans billeted here actually arrived in town. In Bodmin, it was men of the US 29th Infantry Division and 35th Infantry Division that arrived in their greatest numbers. Aside from their military activity, the Americans had a very sizeable impact on the local community from holding dances and dishing out delicious candy to children, to the several love affairs that occurred with local women. One such example is that of Edith Doreen Kearney, training as a nurse at Bodmin St Lawrence's Hospital at the time. She met Frank Kearney of the 29th Division, 115th Infantry Regiment HQ in Bodmin. Frank, along with a large majority of other GIs in town, officially left Bodmin in late May 1944 to complete the final preparations for D-Day. Many of these men, sadly, would never return. Frank did, however, and one year later, whilst on leave, married Doreen in Barnstaple. The pair went on to enjoy 50 years of marriage, living happily in Philadelphia and having three children together. Although the DCLI did not return to Victoria Barracks until 1949, in October 1944, Walker Lines became the home of the 96th Primary Training Centre for new British recruits. Private John Mason was one of these recruits undertaking his basic training at Walker Lines in May 1945. In a series of published letters sent home to his mother, he details what it was like to live at Walker Lines camp. Amongst other things, John describes the Naffy Canteen, a cinema, and various restrooms on the camp. He also tells his mother that in his hut there were 30 men comprising a four squadron. To give an idea of where some of these men had come from, his closest friends at Walker Lines were from Birmingham and the Isle of Man. The 96th Primary Training Centre was eventually disbanded in 1946. Then, in 1948 until 1950, Walker Lines became home to the Royal Army Education Corps. In 1951, the Joint Services School for Linguists, otherwise known as the JSSL, was opened at Walker Lines. Its purpose was to prepare intelligence officers and spies for the Cold War by teaching an intensive Russian language course. The school remained at Bodmin until 1956, when it amalgamated with two other JSSL schools. 
famous alumni of Bodmin's JSSL include former Governor of the Bank of England, Eddie George, as well as actor and writer Alan Bennett. Three years following the departure of the JSSL from Walker Lines, the Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry merged with the Somerset Light Infantry in 1959. In 1962, the newly formed Somerset and Cornwall Light Infantry moved out of Bodmin and away from the site, ultimately leaving no further working role for Victoria Barracks or Walker Lines. In 1964, all 52 acres of the Walker Lines camp, including its 111 buildings, were sold to Bodmin Borough Council for £36,000. By the 1970s, Walker Lines had begun to thrive as an industrial estate, with many of the businesses on site operating from original Second World War buildings. A brand new housing estate was also built at this time. Although many of the wartime camp buildings have been demolished, some do remain, giving glimpses into the site's history. Many are occupied by small businesses and the old camp gymnasium is operated as a boxing club and community facility by the Walker Lines Gymnasium Trust. Clues to Walker Lines military heritage can also be found in the road names which refer to significant battles involving the Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry in the US Army divisions, including Normandy Way and Lucknow Road.